Welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Bombay. In the previous lecture, you have got a taste of some impairments and how they affect communication system performance. In this lecture, we are going to look at frequency offsets and a basic idea of how you can measure frequency offsets in GNU radio and some of the blocks in GNU radio, particularly the phase lock loop blocks that can be used to figure out the frequencies. Of course, the PLL block is useful because even in the presence of noise, it is able to detect the frequencies. That is something which we will see as we start with GNU radio. Before we actually get into the details of a PLL, let's actually just do a simple conceptual exercise. Let's actually mix two sinusoids of different frequencies and check what we get. So I'm just going to double click this SAMP rate and make it 192000 and first let's just get a signal source, Control F for Command F. We'll get a signal source and we will make the signal source a cosine. We'll keep the frequency at let's say 1000, that is fine, but we will make it a float. Next, we will grab another signal source. We'll just do control C and control V, control V rather. And I will make this into a sign. And uh, let's say that, you know, let's make this uh, plus delta F. And if you do plus delta F, then we'll just have a range for this delta F. So control F for command F, we'll say range and We'll double click this range, we'll call this delta F and we will make this go from 0 to let's say, let's say we'll go, we'll make it go from minus 10 to 10 hertz, step 0 0.1 and just to make it more visually pleasing, let's make it 10,000, let's make it 10,000, we'll also make this 10,000. And we are now going to mix these. So let's first get a throttle. Control F for Command F. We'll get a throttle. We'll make the throttle a float. And we will connect this. And we will then do a mixing, which is multiplication. Control F for Command F. We'll get a multiply block. And the multiply block is going to be connected over here. Connected over here. And now let us visualize what we get if we have a delta F. So Control F for Command F. And of course, we need to also do a low pass filtering to remove the 2FC component. So I'll just get a low pass filter, control F for command F, we'll say low pass filter. We'll make the low pass filter have real coefficients and have cutoff at exactly 10,000 hertz. Transition width of 1,000 should do. And then let us visualize what we get. Control F for command F and I'll grab a time sync and we'll view what we get in this time sync. So now you can see that if there is no frequency offset, right, you end up getting something like zero because cos into sine and you know, there's not nothing much to check. But if you have a delta F, you can see that there is a movement. In fact, let's make this delta F something significant. You can see that it is moving up and down to actually visualize this better. Let's actually increase the number of points here by tenfold and now if you have a frequency offset you can sort of see that you can get this cycle and by measuring the frequency of the sinusoid you will be able to get the frequency offset. Let's increase this by one more amount and then let's just check. Let's set it to 10 hertz. Okay, let's actually do one thing. Let us actually also view a view this in the frequency domain. So I'll just add control F for command F. I'll add a frequency sync. We'll increase the number of points for the frequency sync also. We'll make it 32768 and let's see what we get. Initially you get, essentially you get zero and these are, we, these can be ignored for the moment. If you increase this to 10 hertz, then if you zoom in over here, you will see that you are getting 
a peak at 10 hertz that is exactly corresponding to these so it's 396 496 you know and so on so that's exactly 10 hertz so the key idea is that this kind of approach to measure the frequency difference by mixing can allow you to construct a filter where you can start adjusting the frequency of this sign so that you match it along with the face now this has been implemented in a this has been implemented in the pll blocks in blue radio so control f for command f and say pll you have this pll carrier tracking frequency detector and regeneration in fact we will be looking at the pll frequency detector that actually has a more sophisticated version of this and using it to generate a carrier at the receiver in the presence of noise as well let us first begin by adding a few variables and making some simple changes first we will make the sample rate a little more convenient <clears throat> we will set this to 192000 then we will choose our FC as 40 kilohertz and we will just track nominal changes so control F for command F and say variable and grab a variable over here and double click this variable and we will call it FC and set it to 40,000. We will also add a range to add a frequency offset and ensure that we are able to track it. So control F for command F, we will say range QTGY range. We will call this range delta F, delta underscore F. And let's say that it's default zero, let it go from minus 100 to 100 Hertz and let's say step by 0 0.1 now we are ready let us create a signal source a complex signal source control F for command F we'll type signal we have a signal source over here we will double click it and we can set the frequency to FC plus Delta F Amplitude is 1, we will not have any phase currently. We will add a throttle, control F for command F and we will say throttle. We will add noise to this. So let's first create a range for noise standard deviation, control F for command F, say range. Double click it and call it noise STD. And at the baseband, complex baseband, we will now add this noise, control F for command F. We will say noise. Control F add and we will add this noise but we should change the amplitude to noise STD. Uh, noise STD should be a number which goes from 0 through 3 and let's say step 0.1. Now the next thing that we need is actually a we'll use a PLL frequency detector so control F for command F PLL we'll say PLL frequency detector of course we can also track it with the phase but we're just going to use a frequency detector detector to begin with now a PLL frequency detector takes the input with three parameters and gives a float output the float output is essentially corresponds to the frequency Let's set these values. The loop bandwidth is the loop filter bandwidth. We will set it to 6.28 upon 100. That is, they recommended that a value between you know 0 and 2 pi by 100. The minimum phase per sample corresponds to the minimum frequency that you want to detect. Since we are expecting about minus 100 to 100 hertz of frequency shifts, let's actually just write that carefully. So it's 2 pi times, so I'll write 6.28 times FC minus 100 divided by sampling rate. Similarly, the maximum we expect is a 100 hertz deviation, 6.28 times FC plus 100 divided by sampling rate. Now, this essentially is going to give us our 
frequency detector to verify that things are working let us just add a qtgui time sync so i'll say control f i'll say qtgui time sync and we'll add a real value time sync and we'll call this uh, frequency detect okay so now let's just see what the output is in this case if i execute this flow graph so i have an output which is close to 0.86 now if i may move this delta f you will see that it varies ever so slightly let's zoom in over here by moving this you can see that this is essentially moving up and down so what is essentially happening is this the pll is actually getting an estimate of this particular frequency and after estimating this frequency it is translating it into an amplitude or a voltage value so as you can see this amplitude now can be used to generate a frequency let's actually do that so control f for command f we will say vco stands for voltage control oscillator we'll get a complex voltage control oscillator we will specify the sampling rate a samp rate now the sensitivity is basically going to convert the the, the it's a constant which takes care of converting the voltage to a frequency so in this case the values are between 1.30 to 1.31 and uh, we know that the midpoint that is uh, something like 1.308 uh, is going to correspond to 40 kilohertz so let's actually try this so i'm just going to say 2 pi times uh, we'll, we'll just do this calculation carefully so 506116 so it's about 1.308 so 1.308 okay so then if we connect this over here let us then inspect the frequency which we get so control f or command f and we'll say freq we'll grab a qt gui frequency sync let's add two inputs and connect the generated frequency with this now this sensitivity should actually correspond to actually this is a slight change this sensitivity should correspond to 40000 hertz so we'll say this is actually 6.28 times 40000 divided by 1.30833 let's verify what we get amplitude should be 1 and if we now execute this flow graph you get a frequency close to 40 kilohertz and we see that these two essentially are matching because if you remove this you get the same now if you increase or decrease this delta f you will see that the change is essentially getting reflected now in the presence of noise you will see that this particular frequency which is the original one is a very good carrier but there is the noise is essentially affecting the um, generated carrier also the reason is because your frequency measurement in this frequency detector has very very slight issues one approach to handle it is to just smoothen this out with a low pass filter for example i'm just going to say control f or command f and say low pass filter and we can actually either do this or we can actually just do something simpler with averaging let's just remove this let's actually just do some simpler approach with averaging so control f or command f and say interpolating we'll grab an interpolating fir filter and let's make it float to float and interpolation can be one the taps we want to just average so we'll just make it let's say uh, 1 times let's say 0 0.1 times 10 this will give you a tenfold averaging it's just going to average just a moving average of the last 10 samples and if we now connect the VCO through this filter then you will see that even in the presence of noise it's going to be much more stable so if you can if you can if you can make this even more let's say let's make it 0 0.01 to 100 you'll find that 
it's even more sharp okay so by averaging you're able to get the frequency back and let us actually view the frequencies um the sinusoids that are generated so i'm just going to remove this i'm going to remove this time sink and control f or command f add a time sink this time sink we will add two inputs and the two inputs are the original and the generated one and if you observe them you will see that let's observe only the real parts you can see that they both have very very similar frequencies the very slight offset okay the offsets are of course because of the fact that we have very minor uh, you know differences in terms of the floating point and everything the frequency domain you can see but these kinds of offsets can easily be handled so you can see that the pll is tracking the frequency offsets very very closely and this works even in the presence of noise you can see that even if i increase noise you are able to roughly see the tracking giving the same frequency now if you add the pll with the feedback and account for the phase offset also the lock will be very very good and you will not suffer from this issue so in this way a pll can be used in order to track the frequency of course we did not consider the case where there is a modulation on top of this carrier that is something which you can learn out from the references but the concept is very very similar so in this lecture you got a taste of how phase lock loops work in gnu radio in particular while it may be confusing to see how you are able to just get the frequency from uh, you know you have you are able to get the frequency just from a pure carrier the key idea is that even in the presence of noise the phase lock loop essentially does a good job and in fact with a bit of filtering the phase lock loop is able to track the frequency offsets as well in the subsequent lecture we are going to look at some other approaches where if we don't want to track the phase and frequency how you can get away without having to use a phase lock loop thank you